You're a dentist? I am. Is it surprising to you that you were the president of clinics in Arizona? It is. And the president of clinics in uh, Georgia? It is. You don't have a license to practice in Georgia, do you? I do not. And you never went to any of the Georgia Small Smalls clinics? I did not. Or provided any services to those clinics? No. Or did any type of management? No. Or directed any of the activity? No. You did nothing as president of those clinics, did you? No. You didn't even know you were president of the clinics until today? Till today. And besides the ones in Georgia, there were also in Idaho. Did you know that? I had no idea. Boise, Idaho. You ever been there? Never have. No, but you're the, you were the president of the Boise, Idaho clinic, weren't you? That's what it says. All right. Some of these documents you actually signed, Dr. Um, Nash. Are you denying that you were the president of 35 or 40 clinics all over the United States that were uh, owned and operated by Forba? Not denying it. But, but in that capacity, you did nothing. Is that true? Did nothing. And you got paid $30,000 a year. Correct. Were you ever told, as the president of the New York clinic, that New York authorities had audited the Syracuse clinic and found that 40% of its procedures were either unjustified or unnecessary? For objection. I have no idea about that. You didn't know about the wrongdoing that was going on in the New York clinic? I did not. Did you know anything about the quality of care at those clinics in New York? I had no idea. Did you ever ask Mr. Lindley, your duck hunting friend, what's happening at these clinics that were, uh, I have, I'm the president? Did not. Have you ever heard of a company called Albany Access? No. Were you its president? Not to my knowledge know who the owners were of any of the New York clinics? Do not. Dr. Nash, uh, do you know Dr. Curry Bond? No. You ever met him as far as you know? No. Um, is he a dentist? Don't know. Where, do you, do you don't know anything about him? I do not. Um, in front of you is an exhibit that's been marked as Plaintiff's Exhibit 352. And it uh, appears to be a copy of a check uh, from a W.M. Nash of Smyrna, Tennessee. Is that you? That is. Is this a check off of your personal uh, checking account? It is. Is that your signature? It is. Uh, what's the date of the check? Uh, August 27th, 2008, is that what it said? It's your handwriting. I think that's, that, that's my guess at what it is. But I believe it do is. Do you believe that's correct? That's correct. Um, and it's a check to Dr. Curry Bond for $400. Do you remember paying Dr. Bond $400? I do not. Um, in the uh, portion of the check where it says what the check's for, what did you write? Um, there's a writing there says for NY options. I didn't write that. That's not your handwriting, but it's on your check? Correct. You know whose handwriting it is? No idea. Okay, so you wrote a check to a person who you don't know for $400 that somehow ended up in the Forba records. Correct. And you don't know what the check was for? I do not. Did you write checks at Forba's direction from time to time? From time to time. Did they tell you why you were writing the checks? Not exactly, no. Did you have any understanding as to why you were writing checks? No. How about you were doing it at the direction of Forba? Yes. Was it Mr. Lindley who told you to do it? Lindley told me to do it. All right. And did he tell you how much the check should be? Yes. And did he tell you who the check should be written to? Correct. And you sent them to him? Correct. And then had him distribute them? Correct. And he might, he or someone on his behalf might write on the check. They had access to the original check, right? Right. So they might put in whatever that is that they put in on the check. Correct. When you sent this check for Dr. Bond, 
it didn't have the notation uh, for NY options, did it? Did not. And you wrote a lot of checks, didn't you? Uh, what's a lot? 50, 100, something like that. Less than 50, probably. How many do you think you wrote? Less than 50. So, 50 is an estimate, is that fair? It is fair. Might be a little more, might be a little less, but that's your best estimate. Best. And those checks, how much were the checks for? How much were they for? Yes, sir. I don't remember. Were they all for the same amount? No. Uh, they were just um, instances where Mr. Lindley asked you to write a check, you wrote it, sent it to him, and he did with it what he wanted. Correct. Um, were you reimbursed? Yes. So you weren't out any of your own money? Correct. Um, did you ever ask Mr. Lindley, well, what are you, why do you need me to write checks? I really wasn't that interested. You weren't? Correct. Was this a practice that you've uh, done with other people where you write checks for, to people you don't know for amounts that somebody else tells you to write? I've never done that. So one time in your life that you wrote a series of checks at somebody else's direction and didn't know what you were writing them for? Correct. Mr. Lindley was a duck hunting buddy of yours, is that what you said? Correct. Known him for a few years. Did you um, ever suspect what he was up to? I don't understand. Well, you say nobody's ever asked you to do this before, correct? Use your name and your checking account to send money to people, and then you get reimbursed for it, and you don't know what the money's being used for. No. Do you know a, doc, a, a Bob Andrus? No, I do not. Do you know a um, Ken Knott? I do not. Do you know a Rudy Padula? I do not. Okay. Looking at exhibit number 119, does that help refresh your memory that in fact you wrote 31 $100 checks to, to Bob Andrus? Okay, did you keep track for tax purposes or accounting purposes of checks you wrote out and checks you got back? Um, no. You did not. You didn't report either the checks that you received or the checks you wrote? To whom? To the IRS. I did not. Was it a complete wash? It was. Every check you wrote out to whoever Mr. Lindley told you to write a check to, you got the money back? Correct. So from your standpoint, you didn't receive any income for that? Correct. But the $30,000 a year that you received from Forba, did you report that as income? I did. All right. In total, how much money did you write out of your account at Mr. Lindley's direction? I don't know. Well, you estimated maybe about 50 checks. Can you estimate the total amount of money you spent? Estimate uh, $15,000, $20,000. Have you ever heard of the term straw man? I've heard of the term straw man, yes. What is a straw man? I don't have a definition. Um, you know, I looked that up last night in Webster's and it said a straw man is a front man. Do you agree with that? I have no idea. The other definition was it was a person used as a cover for some questionable activity. Formal. Have you ever? Uh, use the term straw man to describe a person in that that way? Form I have not. Action. Were you paid to be Forbes straw man? Form. No. What did they pay you to do? Sign documents and sign checks. Sign documents and sign checks and they never explained to you why they needed you to do it, right? Correct. And you never asked? Never asked. Wonder why they needed you to Form. sign their checks? Form objection. Did I wonder? Yes. Form objection. Thought it was a part of doing business with Forba. Yes, it was. Did you have a lawyer in, in the, advising you in connection with your dealings with Mr. Lindley and Forba? No. So in addition to writing checks at Mr. Lindley's request, you also signed a bunch of documents. Is that true? Correct. And the combination of writing checks and signing documents is why you got your $30,000 a year. Yes. Is this employment agreement still just one more document that they ask you to sign and you signed without Correct. knowing what it said or meant? Correct. 
did Forva tell you that they wanted you to keep the payments they were making to you secret? No. You don't remember that you agreed to do that under your contract? I was not aware of that. So Forba paid you $30,000 a year, and in exchange for the things you've already described you did, you agreed to keep those payments secret, didn't you, sir? I signed the paper, yes. And that's what the contract said? That's what it said. And you practice dentistry here in the Nashville area? I've just retired. Do you still have a dental license? I still do. And um, what states are you licensed in? Tennessee. Any other states? No. Have you ever been licensed in any other states? No. Uh, have you ever sought to be licensed in New York? No. Have you ever sought to be licensed in any state other than Tennessee? No. Um, and have you ever practiced dentistry in New York? No. Or in any other state outside of Tennessee? Uh, in the Air Force after graduating from uh, dental school in Arkansas at Air Force Base. Until you retired, what you said, in January? Mm-hmm. Where did you work? In my office in Smyrna, Tennessee. Was your practice ever owned by a corporation? No. Or did you ever have any affiliation in your dental practice with a corporation? No. So as the owner, you got all the profits? True. In September of 2006, did you sign an employment agreement with Forba? I did not. All right. Did you sign an employment agreement with a company called Sanus? I did not. Sure about that? Not sure. Okay. Did you, did you understand that there was a company called Sanus uh, for a short time, and then that company changed its name to Forba? I was not aware of that. Were you the executive vice president of operations of Forba beginning in September of 2006? I did not know my title. <clears throat> right. did, you didn't know that you were the executive vice president? I did not know. Did you know that you were an officer of Forba? I understood that I was uh, part of Forba in some way. I wasn't sure of the relation. All right. Dr. Nash, uh, you have what's been marked as Exhibit 346. It's entitled Employment Agreement. And it says it's an agreement on sep from September 26, 2006 between Santa Services and William Nash. You're the William Nash, correct? Correct. Would you look at the page 13, next to last page of the exhibit, and confirm for us that that's your signature? It is. Okay, so you did sign an employment agreement in September of 2006, correct? Correct. And your title, or your position, was uh, Executive Vice President at Regional Operation. Can you confirm for us that that's your position? Look at Section 1.2. Executive Vice President, Regional Operations? Yes, sir. Interesting. It co comes as a surprise to you. Interesting. In it's interesting? Uh, it is a surprise. You don't remember that you signed this document? Not specifically. Did you go out to Las Vegas? in September of 2006 with Mr. Lindley and Smith and others? I did not. All right. So when you sign these documents, do you remember the circumstances in which you signed documents in September of 2006? Uh, I think we were in this office building here. All right. We're in an office in downtown Nashville at the Waller Law Firm? Correct. And you think you came to the firm and signed a bunch of documents? True. Okay. Did you read them before you signed them? Not thoroughly enough. You didn't, did you read your employment agreement? I did not. I was not aware of that. All right. Um, under your employment agreement, uh, you were to report to Mr. Mike Lindley. Did you know that? Uh, I understand. Did you know it at the time? I did not know it at the time. All right. And Mr. Lindley was the chief executive officer of Forba. Is that right? That's correct. Is he a friend of yours? He's a friend. How long has he been a friend of yours? Oh, seven or eight years. Uh, okay. Did you? When did you first meet him? I mean, we're uh, friends in a duck hunting club, and I met him duck hunting. All right. Did you know any of the other executives at uh, Forba? I did not. Um, how did you get that title, Ch Executive Vice President of Regional Operation? I have no idea. Pardon? I do not know. 
Was that a title that Mr. Lindley bestowed on you? Must have. All right. And you agreed? I signed it. You signed the document, yes. Um, how long were you the uh, executive vice president of regional operation for FORBA? The length of time? Yes, sir. I guess from this date until uh, the company dissolved. Uh, this contract remained in effect. Uh, you, never, you never signed a new contract, did you? I have not, and, to my knowledge. Uh, did you resign at any point? I did not. All right. So until uh, very recently, you were the executive vice president regional operation of FORBA, correct? Correct. Um, did you invest any money in FORBA? I did not. Were you given any stock? I was not. Um, did you, in fact, Dr. Nash, oversee FORBA's operations? I did not. Did you oversee the operations of any of the FORBA dental clinics? I did not. Did you ever, as an officer of FORBA, visit any of the dental clinics? Visited uh, one time, uh, two clinics in Illinois, I believe, where I was asked to go and see the operation. In Illinois? I think so, yes. Where in Illinois? I don't remember. Other than that one visit to two Illinois clinics, did you ever visit any of the other clinics? I did not. What was the purpose of your uh, trip to Illinois? Uh, as a, to get to me to know uh, what a building looked like and meet some of the employees. Did Mr. Lindley go with you? He did. Anybody else from FORBA? Uh, not to my knowledge. Did you ever advise any of the dentists who worked at the, at the FORBA clinics? I did not. Uh, did you ever attend any FORBA board meetings? I did not. Uh, did you ever attend any FORBA business meetings? I did not. Uh, did you ever conduct any studies for FORBA? I did not. Did you ever generate any reports for FORBA? No. Any other kind of work product where you, uh, as the executive vice president of regional operations, generated work product for FORBA? No. In exchange for agreeing to be the executive vice president of re regional operations, uh, FORBA paid you money. Is that true? That's true. Uh, do you remember how much? Uh, $2,500 a month. $2,500 a month. What does that come out to per year? That would be 12 times that. Anybody got a calculator? Well, the, your contract says you got paid $30,000 a year as a base salary. Do you believe that was correct? Fairly close, yes. And they paid you what they owed you? They did. Did they also pay you bonuses? No. Your contract says that, they're, that you're entitled to bonuses on a discretionary basis. Is it your testimony they never paid you bonuses? It is my testimony they never paid me bonuses. Is it possible you've forgotten? No. You would remember? I would. Um, did you receive any other benefits from FORBA as the executive vice president of regional operations? No. Are you the uh, president of the Syracuse Small Smiles Clinic? I'm not. Have you ever been? No. You sure? Not sure. You're not sure? Not sure. Um, how could you find out whether you were the president of the Syracuse Small Smiles Clinic? Pardon me? If you needed to know whether mm -hmm. you were you don't remember whether you were the president. Is that your testimony? Um, I am not, the, to my knowledge. You're not and have never been? Never have been. Um, have you ever been the president of any of the Small Smiles clinics? No. Uh, were you one of the managers of the Small Smiles clinic in Syracuse? No. If FORBA designated you as the president of the Syracuse Small Smiles Clinic, was that uh, with your consent? I don't remember. 
if uh, Forba designated you as one of the managers of the Small Smiles Clinic, was that with your consent? I can't say. I don't remember. Do you know who the owners were of the Syracuse Small Smiles Clinic? No. At any time? No. Do you know any of the officers of the Small Smiles Clinic in Syracuse? No. Do you see on this document that among the, uh, the budget for 2007 was a $10,000 bonus for you? I see that. Is it your testimony that you didn't receive that bonus? I did not. Do you see that your title for Small Smiles Dentistry of Syracuse is president? I see that. You didn't remember that you were the president of the clinic, right? I did not. Objection. Did you, as, in your role as president of the Small Smiles Dentistry of Syracuse, did you ever do anything? No. Did you ever go to the clinic in Syracuse? No. Did you ever talk to any of the dentists in Syracuse? No. Did you ever direct any of the activity in Syracuse? No. Do you know where the clinic is in Syracuse? No. Have you ever been to Syracuse? No. Were you the president of any other of the New York clinics? Not to my knowledge. Dr. Nash, I'm showing you exhibit number 349, which is uh, written consent of the <coughs> members of Small Smiles Ministry <coughs> of Rochester. Did you know that Small Smiles and Forba had a clinic in Rochester, New York? I did not. Did you know you were president of that clinic? I did not. Know where the clinic is in Rochester? No. Have you ever done anything in your capacity as president of the Rochester Small Smiles Clinic? No. Have you ever been to Rochester? No. Are you licensed to practice dentistry in Rochester? No. Do you know how many clinics... Um, Forba had in New York? No. You, you do not? Do not. You know what cities they were in? I do not. Dr. Nash, would you look at uh, exhibit number 350, which is uh, consent of Small Smiles Dentistry of Albany. That's Albany, New York. You see you were the president of that clinic, too. I see that. But you didn't know that. Didn't know that. Uh, did you agree? Did I agree? Agree to be the president of Small Smiles Dentistry of Albany? Uh, must have. All right. But you were never asked to do anything? Correct. Uh, you did not direct any of the activities as president of Small Smiles of Albany? I did not. Uh, you never visited the clinic in Albany? No. Don't know where it is? No. Have you ever been to Albany? I have not. Are you the president of any Small Smiles outside of New York? No. Oh, not to my knowledge. 